Hello and welcome everybody to the CNCF Tough Maintainers panel today. I am joined by four fantastic Tough Maintainers here today. And uh, we're going to go through and introduce them uh, here very shortly. We've got a lot of uh, surface area to cover in this panel. You're in for, for quite a ride. So let's just go ahead and start with Marina. And Marina, the rules are when you introduce yourself, you've got to hand it off to the next person who's going to introduce themselves. All right. Hi, everyone. I'm Marina. I'm a PhD student at NYU. I've been working on Tuff for the past um, almost four years now, um, doing research and development, especially on kind of the academic specification and new features side of the project. Um, and a fun fact about me is that I also like to dance. I actually have a, a dance minor from when I was in college. And I'll hand it on to Asra. All right. Hi, everyone. Um, my name is Asra Ali, and I'm a software engineer at Google on the Google Open Source Security team. Um, and I work on supply chain security, and I've previously worked on cryptography and privacy preserving, preserving technologies. Um, and a quick little side fact about me is when I'm not at my computer, I'm usually outside hiking or doing some kind of combat sport training. Um, and I will hand it off to Trishank. Oh my God, remind me not to mess with you. So <laughs> I'm Trishank Karthik Upasami. Sorry, camera off, but kind of midnight here. I hope you'll forgive me. Um, yeah, I've been uh, on and off uh, involved with the uh, top. Uh, you know, the tough project uh, several years now. Um, uh, I'm a security en engineer at, at Datadog, by the way. Yussi, why didn't you go next, please? Sure. Um, I'm Yussi, open source engineer at VMware. I've got a pretty long career in open source and, and now lately in supply chain security. Um, I've got two border colleagues here uh, with me and all of us are waiting for spring to finally arrive in, in Helsinki too. At least at uh, the time of recording, it's not happened yet. And I am Andrew Krug. I'm a, uh, the lead security evangelist at Datadog. I work with Trishank, of course, and uh, happy to be here and moderating this panel today. So for the folks whose first time it is hearing about uh, tough, I think uh, it would just be great to cover like what what is tough and like what are the goals of the project what problem does it seek to kind of uh, solve here? Yeah, so I can start with a little bit of background. So Tuff started off as a, an academic project at the University of Washington, um, where my advisor, Justin Kapos, was working with Justin Samuel and some folks from the Tor project um, to kind of solve this problem of package manager security. And um, there, they've been done some previous research on attacks on software update systems. And so Tuff was an attempt to address these attacks and um, create a compromise resilient um, software update um, framework that allows um, security even in the event that one or more signing keys or even the repository itself um, is compromised. Um, and I'll let others go into more detail. Yeah, um, so I'll just uh, kind of go a little bit more uh, into detail coming from my side of things. So um, I, got introduced to Tuff as I started working on the SigStore project, um, which is a project under the OpenSSF that regards like software signing. And we were building a service um, that required a lot of infrastructure components that you needed to trust. Um, and Tuff was the like way that we started thinking about how do we um, keep that ecosystem of trust um, like compromise resilient, like Marina mentioned, um, and also like to be able to sort of like think about secure updates in the future. So we really started integrating with Tuff and um, adopting some of that framework uh, methodology really from the start um, because we knew that we would eventually have to deal with things like having a trusted route, having to update keys, um, having to update parts of our ecosystem and having a sort of central repository where we were managing with Tuff was the way to go. Um, yeah. Yeah, I guess, I guess that pretty much sums it that um, basically signatures alone, just they aren't very useful, right? Like nobody's going to um, have hundreds of artifacts or something where you're going to somehow figure out which signature should be 
or who should be signing this. You need to be able to, you know, somehow delegate the trust that that you can just um, check one or two things and then that kind of just flows from there. And um, I think that like everyone who starts looking at this problem kind of ends up at this same-ish solution and it, you know, it doesn't have to be tough, but it's going to look quite a lot like it, I think. I think uh, one of the interesting things about tough, right, is that it's actually a, a toolbox of tools and also it's a, it's a framework on top of that. And one of the problems that it seeks to solve is really being really, really usable, right? It's, it's not just like crypto for crypto folks. Uh, one of my favorite quotes from Rob Fuller is you can't spell crypto without cry. And I think that we can, we can all uh, uh, use that to attribute why we haven't seen teams put more of these uh, uh, controls inside of their CI CD pipelines or, or their software release process is that the, the tools just really aren't understandable and accessible. So does anybody have any thoughts on like how much time this project spends on, on UX and usability? Who wants to start? Boy, <laughs> that's, that's a good question. Um, look, so I think, I think, I think if there's one thing that the Open SSF Foundation has done well, especially with Sigstorm, right? Especially with Azra and friends, um, is try to make this technology more accessible to the world. Previously, you pretty much had to have a PhD, okay? <laughs> or close, okay? As, as Marina knows. Um, um, so yeah, the, the, the the, the technology wasn't very usable, but, but look, something like Tough is actually much more useful. Not if you're an, not if you're an individual contributor, but something on the level of uh, prog programming language. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. Something like a programming language uh, community repository, like PyPI or NPM or you know GitHub and so on. Um, and how do I put this? The initiative just wasn't there before, but it's changing now. Um, you want to use stuff to, to give you guarantees like, okay, look, this is indeed the latest stuff that I'm getting. I'm not being mixed and matched. Um, this is actually the Kubernetes project's key, for example. Nasra can talk a lot more about this, than, you know? They've been working about this. So that's something that's been missing before. Um, before, uh, how do I put it? Before some um, recent, uh, what's the word for it? High profile attacks, people didn't really care about signing software, right? I think we can all agree to this. Um, and, you know, with the Biden administration, this has changed, obviously, but we still don't have good standardized tools. And I think Tuff actually belongs in one of these tools, but um, just wasn't too usable before, but we're trying to change that. Sorry, um, someone else should jump in here. Yeah, I think a lot of the Tuff implementations were originally, they came out of academia, right? So they were used as this proof of concept to show how these things can work. Um, in code. And I think we've done a lot of work in the past few years to kind of transition those from more kind of academic code bases um, to things that are a little bit easier to use um, in industry and practice. And I know you see you can talk a lot about the work we've done specifically on Python Tough, our reference implementation, um, to try and make it a lot more usable and just easy to plug into new systems. So. Yeah, yeah. Um, that, that's what we've been working on. Um, in Python Tough, especially, but I think the same process is going on in, in Go Tough as well, where we know we have something that that works for a specific use cases, but it maybe wasn't um, engineered with the with the sort of um, point of view that that maybe is is, is good for security solutions. Um, but I will also say that. Well, well, it is true that this is like we're providing a framework or a set of tools. It's, I think we're also seeing the limits of that, that, um, that when we're trying to look at the kind of generic problem that Tough solves, yeah, right. it's, it, it's not quite easy enough, especially for the, for the repository case, um, to kind of 
for someone to just take that and implement. Um, but if we talk about um, ease of use, I think it's, it's really useful to notice that, that what Tuff does for the client side is pretty magical. And the fact that you get, well, you basically get no user experience because it just works. And that is really something, um, and it, you know, it, it does make it worth it to have to work quite a bit more on the, on the repository side. Um, yeah, I don't know if there are um, a lot of differences in the, the different implementations. I guess we've all kind of, um, approach this in similar ways. So it's maybe some fairly low level libraries that aren't like full solutions and then command line tools. No, but you see, you actually raise a good point, which is that Tuff isn't just this framework, this tool that you use, but you kind of need to know how to use it, right? For your yeah. own uh, use case. That's the problem, really. I mean, yeah. it's a strength and a weakness. Yep. Yeah, yeah, I think we've start. we've seen that from the SIG store side as well, where like we really do approach it like a toolbox, um, which means that we do need to have some like context and understanding of how we're using it. Mm -hmm. um, like uh, you see said, like the client side is fairly easy, you know, it just kind of works out of the box. But when you're looking at the repo management side, or when you're looking at, okay, what do I actually want to protect with tough, then you start thinking of the context. And, you know, I want to protect an ecosystem of infrastructure like six store, or I want to protect, um, you know, developer packages. So there's all these different sort of use cases that when you apply to tough, you realize that your management and your repo workflows end up different. Um, and I think that's part of the challenge that we're seeing when we look at like adoptions and integrations is that you really do have to sort of specify your use of tough within your integration or adoption or ecosystem. Yeah, I think that's one of the challenges, right, with with creating a tool like this, that we want to be flexible enough that it can apply to different languages and different use cases. And I know that there's some really unconventional success stories of tough in the wild, right, like things that we would never think of. But on the other side of that curve, it's it's always a question of how do we make it flexible enough, but also prescriptive enough that it's it's a pl easily applicable. Yeah, speaking of success stories, like I would love to, for like Marina to kind of jump in with the Uptane story here. Um, like that's a really cool story of um, also seeing the whole feedback cycle of you know getting more taps and more uh, enhancements into Tough and having that life cycle complete. Yeah, so Uptain is the automotive variant of Tuff, and it has its own name because um, it kind of uses pieces of Tuff. It has kind of a Tuff inside of it, but it also has a lot of other pieces built on top of that in order to work um, like directly in the automotive space, um, which has a lot of unique challenges having to do with um, very small computers in vehicles and also a whole network of computers that only have one internet connection with which to, to um, receive updates. Um, and so um, Uptain, I think, was a really great project for the Tough um, specification because we learned a lot about, um, you know, we, we, we got TAPS 3 and 4. So we got like a, a bunch of new features from this work with Uptain that are now merged back into the Tough specification and are kind of part of that toolbox for other projects if they have um, similar problems that they, they'd like to address there. Um, and Uptain has been very successful. Um, it's been standardized, I think, under IEEE. ASTO, um, and it's been, you know, we, we work a lot with um, the automotive um, community and we have uh, integrations in various automobiles. Um, so yeah, it's been a very successful project. Um, any other particular questions about that? Well, I, I think this demonstrates like the flexibility, right? We have everything from the obvious, the, the work that uh, has happened on PyPy, Right. Uh, maybe we want to talk just a little bit about uh, more about that Python work as well after this. But then just thinking of this inside of an automobile, um, I actually went to a presentation once where somebody was talking about running K3S inside of a car. And it was, you know, this moment where I didn't know if I should be inspired or terrified. Um, but knowing that there's something like tough that we could put in that supply chain uh, makes me more inspired than terrified. 
Exactly. It's so important that we're able to update the software in car in cars, especially because they're so safety critical that if there's any kinds of bugs, you want to fix those right away and securely. So it's kind of an, it's an exciting project to get to work on. So is there um, something that we could bring back from from Uptain or is it like the tweaks that they did? Is it um, really specific to that use case where where you want the manufacturer to control everything? Yeah, so I think one of the big differences between Uptane and these community repository like PyPI um, implementations is that everything is very much controlled by the automotive OEMs, like the car makers. They, um, they, can, they decide per vehicle, actually. They, they, the vehicle basically asks, which updates should I install instead of in the typical software workflow where the computer says, I want this package. Um, it's a little bit more directed in Uptane. And it goes very top down. I think one of the big pieces from the Uptane model that we can take back to Tough is kind of improvements to compromise resilience. Um, one of the big things that we did for Uptane was support multiple repositories. So it allows updates. I mean, actually, Uptane actually downloads metadata from two different independent repositories and then compares those to each other before actually installing the update. Um, and this has to do with um, ensuring that. Um, you can have that kind of customizability with online keys in one repository and also use offline keys for greater security in another. But this is a pretty flexible mechanism that can be used for um, just downloading from different, different packages from different repositories or just gaining that extra compromise resilience from um, multiple repository consensus on these different updates. Right. If I could add to that, Marina, um, I think in the future, actually, something like Uptane is going to be important everywhere, not just in the automotive context. Um, here's what I mean. Um, if you think about it, it's Uptane, what it tries to solve is try to make as secure as possible cloud package dependency resolution. No? Right? You have this robot sitting in the cloud being able to choose what software you get to install in your Tesla or whatever you like, right? Okay. Um, and do it safely. It can't just make stuff, you know, it can't just make up firmware images on its own. It can choose firmware images, but these firmware images were basically developed by human beings. And I think this is going to be a big problem in um, what we call uh, community repositories, you know, uh, Marina? Yeah, that makes, that makes sense. Um, I definitely think there are lessons from Uptane that can that are more broadly applicable. I think especially to the IoT space, but even just to yeah to community repositories. Yeah, like jumping in on that whole like uh, multi repository support. Um, that's like exactly kind of what we have been thinking with the the Sigstar model. So, um, like if you haven't kind of heard the Sigstar like you know mission statement, I suppose it's to to sort of be like the Let's Encrypt of software signing and and make it easier for developers to like create signing keys and, uh, you know, improve their security posture through that. Um, so one thing that we currently have, like I mentioned before, is like a SIG store tough root that, you know, holds on to our SIG store public infrastructure components. Um, but alongside that, like we also want to make, like extend that SIG store root to be able to endorse, you know, your own public um, tough roots. So let's say you want to go endorse like, you know, your enterprise's recourse signing key, or let's say you want to endorse some signing keys from like, you know, a, a large uh, OSS project. Um, what you can do is you can start, you know, creating multiple repositories and have uh, like clients be able to say, okay, I want to pull from six store root here. And I also want to go reference um, verification keys or other material in other repositories. Um, so the six store model of like, you know, we have a central repository, but we also want to sort of distribute um, signing capabilities to other people really falls into this whole multi-repository situation. Six store sounds like one of those things that like really, really helps people get started, right? Which I think is one of the challenges here. But uh, before we kind of go on to uh, a variety of, of challenges with implementation here, what I'd like to hear maybe from each of you, what do you think is is challenging adoption of these technologies? Because I've heard it's in cars, it's in PyPy. Why do, don't I just see this ubiquitously? Like NPM, uh, for example, if it's in PyPy, it feels like it should be an NPM. Not to, not to pick on NPM or anything, but uh, why do I just not see this everywhere? Yeah, that, that is a really good question. And I think, you know, 
speaking about these these uh, software repositories like npm i i probably have um the most experience with uh looking at those problems with with uh tough and i i think the core issue was that um we like the the tough community maybe underestimated the the implementation complexity of a repository you know much like uh, asra has been in talking about earlier um like just as an example like the the repository only version of um the python uh, like pypi uh, repository which is um like this is a system where we would have tough running on pypi where just the repository signs things on its own and developers don't have any kind of keys um just that proposal i think turns nine years this year so we've been looking at or people have been looking at this problem for nine years and it's still not running it's now pretty close I, there is I a pr i couldn't stop laughing at that one yeah it's so true yeah, <laughs> yeah you, i think you started it uh, <laughs> um so so Obviously, we underestimated the complexity as a as a community, and you know, lately I've been looking at the the real holy grail there, which would be the developer signing, which would kind of give us the situation where we have this uh, protected path from the developers that even like a repository uh, compromise wouldn't you know that wouldn't compromise users' machines, which would be quite something. So I've been looking at that and what it would mean for mm -hmm. those um repositories and it is a far more complex thing so i think we need to <laughs> rethink our approach here um yeah so what, you're, uh, what you're really saying is that at a at any you know repository scale this really starts with like a threat model for the the workflow of the software itself like we've got to think at like a to b to c before we start to put the technology in yeah exactly like the workflows are going to be specific to the use cases we can't you know we can't go and well we've kind of tried that we've we've told them that this is the tough workflow and expected them to just implement it but that's not how it works um so yeah that's yeah, I think you mentioned earlier, Tough really does, it makes the client workflow, like once it's implemented, the client doesn't even see it, right? And so the flip side of that is that there's a lot of work that happens on the repository to make that happen. And we, the repository maintainers of these, of like PyPI and others, they're already very busy people. And so it's tricky mm -hmm. to figure out how to make this as simple as possible for them while still getting these the security properties of Tough that, that are, are really valuable. So that's kind of, that's what we've been trying to solve. Yeah. And in, in addition, the repositories really, really do not want to experiment for good reasons. I mean, they're serving 100 million packages per day or something. They don't want, you know, new things to, to you know, try something out. They want something that's been proven to work. And maybe we haven't quite, quite offered that. Yeah, it seems to be like the more complex like your repository management situation is, like the exponentially harder the tough situation gets. Um, with like our SIG store case, it's like, it was fairly easy to kind of bootstrap a minimal uh, tough roots uh, key signing ceremony and really kick off our tough root. But the the reason why is really because we have a very minimal tough root. Mm -hmm. We're only fetching it, like clients are only fetching a minimal number of targets. And we only have really five or six signers involved in the whole process. So we're looking at like a really nicely well-scoped area. But even then we had an outage maybe like two weeks ago. And that that's very stressful because like yeah. if your tough, you know, system yeah. goes down, then like, you know, your entire client workflow becomes everything. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and so uh, like little problems like that end up happening in repo management. Things like race conditions started coming up. Like when you actually push your repository, do you need to think about race conditions? So um you know, it, it's turned out that like trying to expand the tough route in SIGStore to cover things like, you know, multi repositories and delegations and things like that, that's becoming a, a more difficult problem because the repo management side is is fairly complex. Yeah, I think that's a that's a good way to put it. A lot of these issues are shared, but they just become 
so much more pressing if you have a hundred thousand people signing things. Really interesting engineering problems, right? Because I think as a community, we can all agree that we need this at the repository level, but it's more of a question of how do we get how do we get there? Um, and it's it's about risk management to some degree, not just security risk management, but operational risk management. So uh, this will be a great story to tell in a couple of years, I'm sure, about how we made this map <laughs> the way that we think about software um, in these repositories. So uh, just just kind of moving right along here, um, how how do you uh, handle CVEs uh, between implementations or or like bug bounty type scenarios uh, in the tough uh, framework? Yeah, this has been a really interesting problem because um, the tough project is made up of a couple of different components. There's a specification and then various implementations in different languages. Um, so far, we have. Um, not have any CVEs in the specification itself. I imagine that would follow a similar process, but we have had CVEs in various implementations. And most notably, we've had a few in the Python reference implementation, which kind of by the name, right, it's the reference implementation. And so a lot of the other implementations have like been inspired by this first implementation. And so even if it's not a specification bug specifically, it is a bug that has, you know, spidered its way through the ecosystem. And so we wouldn't want to just really, you know, release a patch in one project without communicating properly with everybody else. And so that's definitely been a, a, a challenging thing to handle. And just, you know, I have this like list of email addresses of like, you know, I think it's six or seven different open source projects that have to be communicated with before we actually release CVEs just to make sure that we're all on the same page and nobody's um, code can be exploited in the meantime. I think I think usually though is it is it fair to say that the bugs have been fairly specific to implementations and not the framework in general? Yes, that's definitely true. Um, they 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 yeah they're implementation specific and usually it's not everyone that's affected, but it's a couple implementations that made the same mistake, um, which usually means we should clarify something, which we have definitely done. But it's not they're not technically specification bugs, right? So so maybe here's the lesson, right? <laughs> which is that look, security is hard enough to get it right. So I don't want to, okay, look, let me, let me just say it. Don't reinvent stuff. Okay. You could try to do it. You're going to mess it up because believe me, we have. Okay. So yeah. 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 I heard, I heard a couple of things there that I just want to kind of unpack a little bit. I heard disclosure is really hard. Um, like, in, in an open ecosystem like this. And of course, like patching is really hard in an open ecosystem. So I would just kind of ask the question to all of you, like when you thought about this, like the CVE process for TUP or how you're gonna handle issues like this, do you take any learnings from anything like the, the Kubernetes project, which, which also like kind of has the exact same problem, right? When they get a critical vulnerability, they have to kind of secretly work a patch in before they make the public release. And there's all these stakeholders that need to be notified so what was your kind of process there? Yeah, I think it's a pretty standard um, process based on the idea of we have, um, it, you know, it's still an open source project, but we have a temporary uh, little, little closed section of it that we make to handle these vulnerabilities and invite in uh, maintainers of any projects that, um, you know, need to see it or, you know, are, are relevant for the, for the disclosure. Um, but obviously like drawing the line there like who needs to see it is, is always a tricky question. Um, yeah. So I know Marina has done in, in previous bugs, you've done good work on trying to figure out like which projects we really need to mm -hmm. get in the same room, basically. Yeah, I think one thing that we've uh, started to also realize is the importance of like cross compatibility uh, and like interoperability. Um, like that's one learning, I think, as we see like more adoptions, the really nice upshot of like having people use things is that like you realize you need more robust and hardened like procedures in your underlying libraries. Um, and so uh, we've seen like proposals now to like think about uh, interoperability. And, and that's also where a lot of the bugs have been coming from in some of the implementation. So especially like from my side, um, SigStore is like Go based. So we use a Go tough implementation. Um, that's on the, the update frameworks um, organization on GitHub. And we've realized that there's um, 
interoperability bugs between like Rust clients and Python clients, which is like especially pertinent in a global ecosystem like SigStore. Um, so we've realized that like, yes, we kind of need to start investing some effort into making sure that all these implementations are not only like bug free, but also like on the same page, um, which would help with uh, things like, you know, CVEs in reference implementations trickling down. Um, so that that's one thing that like, I think one learning in the past like year or so that we've realized that this really needs to be like a P1, P0. Yeah, I think um, you might be like the first first implementation running into actual problems with this. So far, possibly everyone's been kind of working on a right. language specific thing and maybe even thinking that it's not important. Like this is just an implementation for, you know, PyPI. So obviously it's everyone's running the same client that's implemented in Python and that's it. But you've shown that, of course, it's not true. Yeah, that's a really good point. Like a lot of clients are sort of siloed into their own ecosystem. So it like really interoperability really maybe hasn't been relevant. But like as we've seen, like in this, you know, people wanting to adopt SigStore tools in a variety of different ecosystems means that SigStore's tools, which means Tufts tools, have mm -hmm. to be interoperable. Yeah. Um, so it's kind of this trickle down um, <laughs> requirement. I think yeah. it's and very obviously it's go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say, I think it's very cool that you're thinking about interoperability at the outset, right? And I think that that is a, a great highlight for just how far we've come as an industry that we're not kind of like backing our way into interoperability. It's like a, a design tenant at the outset. And, and that's very cool. And I don't know that we see that 100% of the time. Yeah, it's an especially tough problem just because of uh, how many people need to be on the same page with these sorts of things. Like with uh, Marina, like coordinating bug disclosures, it's like trying to get all the projects, especially open source projects, like in the in the same like you know synced up uh, version of things is very difficult. Um, I think we all know that from experience. I, uh, I'll just pause here and just acknowledge that you said it was a tough problem. I know, I know. I was just going to point it out too. Like, it's brilliant. <laughs> I, I make this joke all the time in your in your sync meetings. But, um, yeah, so I, I think the upshots here is that there, there really is like a lot of continuous improvement in the project and really kind of incorporating learnings and trying to, to engineer ahead. Of, of the problems that you're anticipating, which is, it's a massive change in the way that we think about and build software, you know, as, a, as an industry. So what, yeah, what do you- if, 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 if I could add to that, um, Andrew, I think, I think the genius behind a project like Sigstor is to try to make this accessible to everybody. Pre previously, before this, you really needed to, um, now you can use stuff in a way you don't even really need to understand how it works, right? Someone like Kubernetes can come along and use the keys and don't worry about all that stuff behind the scenes, right? Thanks to um, all this great work by, by Asra and Marina and UC and friends and so on. But before this, you really needed to do a lot of the work on your own. And that's, I think, is, uh, what's the word for it? Bit of a, bit of a, failing of the project, right? We could have done this better. Yeah, I think we're starting to see as well that like um, the more adoptions we have, the more, you know, we by force have to improve those those like, you know, APIs and uh, mm -hmm. command line tools that we're exporting. So I think, I think one really nice thing is that uh, especially the more use cases you have, the more you're kind of informed on like what the best and most scalable um, solutions are. Uh, and yeah, it's, it's, it's really interesting to sort of see the involvement of projects, even in like the past year, um, with Python tough and go tough and rust clients, like they're all really improving the more usage we have. Yeah, great. So what's, uh, what's next for the project? Like what's the, the number one thing that you're all focused on right now that's unsolved? I don't know if we're all focused on it, but I think for me personally, it, it, it's definitely the the repository side that we've already you know touched on several times. That implementing a specific repository is just way too complex. There is a like a 
like a level missing. We've got a good good base in in the tough implementation, and then we've got the the user project somewhere high above, and there's just things missing here in between. Um, th that's that's definitely something that we're. I kind of feel that like in the tough specification, the client workflow is quite well defined and it's it's easy to read and kind of grasp what it does. And we kind of need good repository workflows for, you know, in the same way, you know, described and this is going to happen in this situation. Um, but the problem there is that these different repository types that we've been talking about, they they have different workflows. It's it's very clear and different needs. And I'm sure that's the reason reason why why the specification doesn't really talk about any of that stuff. So oh, oh, oh. so sorry, go ahead. Yeah. Yeah, I, just that that's what we need a good solution for. Or more likely we need multiple different solutions for these different use cases. Marina, you think? Yeah. Some, oh, sorry, it's just somewhat similar. I, um, I think what I've been really focusing on is figuring out from these conversations with the doctors and with different implementations, um, which of these problems are new features that we should be adding to Tough, and which of these new features should we be prioritizing to really help people make this process easier and and, um, and make that move along. And then coming from my side too, that repo management is, is again, the biggest key here. Um, so we're trying to get basically like smaller projects and developers more interested and able to create their own uh, tough um, repository. So again, this comes down to how do we give them the tools and like package them the SIG store way um, for them to be able to do some of this. Um, and so like I'm in particular kind of looking at uh, ways to leverage GitHub workflows um, since most OSS developers are probably familiar mm. with GitHub. Um, and I know Joshua Locke as well has been looking at that sort of thing of oh, how do you do repo right. management on GitHub workflows. Um, so I, I think honestly that that's like the the next easy step to do um, to get developers like you know more quickly on board with that. Yeah. So so I know I know what my next obsession in life is. Right. It's um, look. Um, so I really like this new OpenSSF project. It's called, oh, I forget what it's called exactly. Something like protecting the, um, you know, open source software repositories, okay? Marina and I like to call it um, 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 community repositories. So my mission in life is to see something like PyPI, something like NPM, something like GitHub, RubyGems, you name it, protected on the top, invisibly, and you don't even know it. Right, and we've had ideas. We know how uh, securing software repositories. Okay, thanks, Marina. Yeah, exactly. That's why. So, so that's my mission in life is to try to help this project coming along. They're using excellent technologies like Pulgio. Okay, so here's what I want to see in the future. Right? Okay, is developers, open source developers, using throwaway uh, Pulgio keys, which is a uh, this technology that you have in uh, SIGSTORE um, and you use TUF to securely distribute that it is you who's supposed to be using this key. Right now, we don't quite have that technology just yet. So we're not living in a world yet where we can download, oh, you know, pip install Django, for example, and you get all the dependencies securely. We just don't live in that world yet. Um, I would like to get us to a stage you know everyone here in the room of course um get to a world where we use stuff to securely um get your dependencies the latest version of them make sure you've not been uh, mixed them it, it's a particular attack that i don't really want to go into right now but also more importantly how do you know that you're the one who's supposed to sign for this project how do i know that you're the django developer right this is a big problem that the world is not solving right now. We can we can we can sign things like UC is saying. Just because it's a signature, why should I trust you? So, so we are just about out of time uh, for today's panel. Um, but I just want to make sure and, and recap. You know, tough is a it, it's a toolbox and a framework, right? And I put the URL for the tough project on screen. 
But I know that uh, you all have a little bit more advice on, on how folks might get involved with these projects. Um, we can throw some of those URLs up on screen as well if you have like a, just a couple of pieces uh, that, that you want to recommend for, for kind of getting started. 